So recently I've been getting a ton of comments about how to practice graffiti and how to improve your pieces. So I figured I'd break down some of the tips I like to use with you know, developing a piece or developing a throwing and share those with you guys and hopefully let you learn a little bit about the background of how I develop my pieces. So I wanna give a quick promo here for some new t-shirts and hoodies I released. I'm calling this the Orbit Design. I basically hit up a ton of throw ups in this big circular Orbit Design. And ultimately, I'm putting these out for the next couple weeks, hitting this right in time for the holiday season. So if you need some new threads for the winter time, be sure to check out that hoodie. And ultimately, the sport goes right back into future stuff on the channel, so it's a win-win for everybody. They'll be available on my web shop, sive.bigcartel.com. You can also find that linked in the description of the video if you want to head over there. I appreciate the support that a bunch of people have already shown over on Instagram. Be sure to check out the posts over there if you want to see a little bit more detail about it before we get into a, a full video dedicated for it. Now back to the tutorial. So I know lots of tutorials harp on the fact that the structure of your letter is the base bone and that should be your essential piece to work off of. And likewise, I'm gonna break down the structure of what a letter means and how you can build it up to a piece. So I think I'm just gonna go after a B in this tutorial because it is a nice letter that has a bunch of different variations within it and it gives a little teaching point. So your traditional B, as you would draw in elementary school, is just a simple vertical line with these two wisps going around it. Now that looks fine, you can see that I've got the structure, everybody can really read that as a B. But if you were actually to come in here and start getting a little bit more expressive, you might turn that vertical line over here. But then if you keep those two same wisps going around kind of in that same manner, it really kind of gives a wonky total structure to it. So keeping a sound structure kind of breaks down when you have instances where you are mixing styles or you're mixing rotations of parts of the letters. Because if I were to simply rotate the entire B, you can see that looks fine and you'd even have a little bit more expression to it than the first one, but it's also maintaining that structure. Both these curls are you know, normal to that vertical line, whereas they are here, kind of just simply rotated. So I want to go through and show you how adjusting some of these sections as you grow the letter is really going to help you keep that structure, but also add some characteristics to it that you know bring it up to that nice graffiti style. So for starters, your penmanship and ability to draw with the pencil is obviously going to be a little bit different than mine. Practicing and going very slow and actually being meticulous on how you create the letter is going to help you understand and is also going to help you kind of generate the technique on how to flow that page without you know getting really crude lines or really aggressive pressure on the page to try and you know get the line to land where you want. So simply kind of stretching this up, I'm gonna draw this B a little bit bigger. You can see I'm keeping a pretty light pressure on the page just so you know you, you can keep the smoothness going with those rounds. And then I'm simply gonna stretch this line wider. So simply making that vertical line into a, a rectangle, it's gonna make it a little bit wider and kind of spread that line out. Then you can do the same thing with these two rounds. So starting with the top round, just go around with a simple wider spray and then also come around with a kind of closer interior one. You can do the same thing with the bottom. Start with the interior, kind of trace around that line. Start with the exterior. So there we have a little bit larger of a B. You can see I can already start to choose how I want the structure of this to land. So I can stretch that line longer to make sure it lands back at the bottom of the B. And then also the capping on the letter edges is gonna change the style quite a bit. So looking at the top of the B, I could simply pick this angle as where I wanted that stroke to start. And you can see it you know, has some character to it. A little bit different than the vertical line here. But if I were to actually rotate that and start you know, a total horizontal line and continue that line over, you're totally changing how that B looks. So a lot of time when I see people that have a little bit stressed structures on their letters, they're choosing very strange ways to end off each box. So you know, simply putting a totally vertical line here works pretty nicely too because you have that vertical line there. But anything really past that 45 degree mark down into here is giving a kind of weird tailored edge. Now, there's gonna be plenty of examples of people that are able to maintain that and master that. Keep something that is similar to the structure of your original pen. A good way to also show this is with the calligraphy tip. So if I come down here and just draw that vertical B line, you can see my rectangle is now you know, predefined for me. But also with that B, if I was able to go through and just pick you know, the same orientation of my pen so that the vertical line is the widest point. You can see we've got somewhat of a funky B. I really don't care for this because you've got the widest points over here and then you've got some really thin points where it connects back to the vertical box. So something 
commonly done is actually rotating your pen so you've got your vertical line slightly adjusted so you've kind of almost rotated that B already and then you can also rotate this so that your wide angle of the box comes around and then fits back in. Let's try that once more. So you can see my wide angle is now starting at the top, lets my vertical line be kind of that skinny section, and then kind of finish it off with a little bit of a curl. So that being said, similar style here, picking somewhat of a intermediate angle to it, or even keeping to that same side angle here, will give it some unique flair. And you can even start erasing out some of those center lines so you can get a better understanding of how the whole letter lines up. And then similarly for the bottom, if I were to change this and do a totally flat line like that, it can kind of work all the same. But if I were to go for you know that same vertical line here, just as is, it might get a little bit weird. So there are ways to salvage that. So I think I would either round this off so that I can get you know somewhat of a more natural progression or even change that angle up again. So choosing to change my box angle to that side, rather. So that, you know, with something that's natural, maybe your pen does curl around at the end and get you back up that way. And I think it adds a little bit, you know, expression back up to the top. You know, you're opening that letter back up to read a little bit differently. Something that I've definitely reflected on quite a bit since I started is, a comment me and my friend were going after where we're saying we're you know, having a troubled time even just drawing a simple bubble letter that looks as if it does you know, in text print. Something like an S here where you've got a lot of curves and a lot of strange definitions on thickness and whatnot is something that could throw you for a whirl if you're really just trying to go right into the graffiti style. You know, I've got crazy differences in the thickness of letters here. So coming in here and trying to just bold the letter and keep a consistent thickness comes out with a much stronger structure. So I really suggest trying to keep the whole box of your letter same size to start. Really learn the structure of the letter and try to learn to use the characteristics of you know this B or the angle of the box to give it that expression. Because once you're here, you can add a ton of different details to help bump it up and give it that you know bigger graffiti style. So once again, I want to you know give a quick practice on that S. So if we do a, a little larger, I'm hoping that I'll be able to just draw a very simplistic S, but keep you know that structure all unique and all the same. So trying to keep you know the same distance away from that center line. And really try to focus on drawing that very simple, you know, bubble letter style without getting too expressive on how the actual letter is coming out. So here I could either, you know, choose to turn the S back as exactly the same as the top, but, you know, I've got a nice curl down at the bottom. And you can see this is going to provide a much safer foundation for you to build up on than if you were to just go at it and try and, you know, do the whole S all at once. You've got a bunch of wonkiness here that's really going to be hard to work with. So for myself, I you know generally lay out that center line that I want to keep, kind of give that structure, and then I can start adding information like you know a big kind of bit hit up here, kind of add that front, or maybe you do want to have the top of the S with a little hat. So hit that up so you got a little bit more expression there and maybe follow out the backside with one as well. So let's turn this B into something a little bit more wild style and try to grow it up a little bit. So I hope you guys are able to follow along quite nicely here. But also something that I find a ton of people do is not giving yourself enough room. Get a full sheet of paper to practice this single letter. Make sure you're not running onto the edges of your pages or you're too worried about how close it's running into stuff. Start in the middle and just work from there. So once again, I'm gonna start my B, very simple. Could use it to be actually a little bit bigger. So stretch this down a little bit. There we go. And then I can actually, you know, since these lines are a little bit different, I could use some of these interior lines if I really wanted. So just starting with the upper box, gonna get my wider edge. Let me come in here, get my inner edge. Same with the bottom, get that inner line get a little bit wider of an outer line, and then quickly just erase away and see what you're started with. So I definitely want to have this totally connect up top, so I'll extend that a little bit further. 
I did want to keep with that same structure as before, show a little bit of uh, your consistency. So what I'm going to try and do here is keep with the momentum of the piece. So you have a line coming back through here, similar to extending that one, is extend some of these other lines and see what you might come up with. So that feels really natural to come up here and then maybe double back so I could work in something a little bit more expressive. And then maybe seeing as this line has to tailor back in, maybe even do a split with something different up here for that interior line. So you can see that you know maybe your interior line goes up and out, your exterior line follows a little bit wider of a circle. So here we've got this vertical line coming in contact with that so it might look cool to kind of make it a point and so it just barely touches there and that's going to add you know the ability to fill out some of these areas you've got a very wide section down here so you might want to add something in there to break it up so something that goes in line with it maybe just a bit that is slightly wider but could be a plate or something on top of your letter and you can see I'm um, you know, just changing the contour of that line slightly to kind of browse what it might look like. Building this letter is going to allow you to do is kind of create some consistency in styling. So I've got some somewhat aggressive lettering with how this angle's coming back up over here. So maybe I want to repurpose some of those really hard lines coming down over on the top section. But it, you can see I'm still maintaining that circular flow of the entire beast as to not get rid of that original structure. But just amplifying and redefining some of these sections will allow you to get some unique effects and vary that width or thickness of the letter. So you can you know, either pull away detail or kind of break up a section that might be taking too much weight away from the entire piece. And you can see here, if I were to go and define both these lines coming in like that, it would kind of give a weird pull into that area. So definitely don't want to define the top section in the same manner as that one. So maybe just leave that as a 45 degree and move away from it. Don't feel like you have to perfect one section before moving along. Build up a section you know, as best you want and then kind of use that information to inform your decisions later on. If you try and perfect a section far too much before you get everything else laid out, you might have some competing clauses and you're going to have to re revisit it anyway. So definitely try to address things you know, kind of openly to start and then slowly tailor back the entire piece. So now's a good time. I'm just going to clean up all my lines, see what I've got so far, and then you know address what I want to kind of attack next. You can see I might need a little bit more momentum in this direction, kind of shift that top over here just to round it back out as it's moving a little bit too far that way. You know, none of this is you know, exact fact of the matter, but it's similar lines that I've drawn you know, hundreds of times at this point. So growing them up and making them into new letters is kind of secondhand at this point and it's just you know, finding that flow and finding how you want to define the letter as to not you know, break that structure but also add some kind of unique qualities to it. So I kind of like how this comes up and out and then maybe a line that kind of hits it and curves under would be cool. So simply just making a generic box of that shape and seeing where that will take us. And you know you've got this edge of the B so you know maybe we choose to connect some of these lines back down here as well. So you almost got a double bottom going. So that's also gonna pull the letter a little bit longer. So something to keep in mind as you build it up that you, know, you are gonna change that structure a little bit if you do start doing stuff like this. But I think it'll add you know, a unique level of crisscross down at the bottom and then maybe adjust the top up here to uh, you know, also counterweight it a little bit further down. And the other letters in your piece too are gonna help define this. So you can leave a you know, be just like this and start building your other letters and see what kind of connections and extras you want to make. So instead of that wisp coming off the bottom curl, it might come off this vertical hit instead. I could even layer this on top of that other hit to try and uh, you know, build that into the, the depth of the piece too. 
So I have this line come over top and then set kind of this semicircle in beneath it, but still above that original line. And you see I'm also erasing away into the line. So this is gonna erase up, that's gonna erase down and out. So as to not to like focus on this one, erase straight over and now it looks like this line's kind of trying to extend that way. I'm erasing and drawing within where that B would naturally flow. And that'll help keep that structure and also you know, tell the eye where to actually follow the line. And definitely bring your head out and take a wide look at what you think the whole piece is gonna look at and almost let your eyes blur a little bit and you'll be able to see kind of some outliers of what's looking funky. Right now, this hit here really looks out of place, doesn't follow the whole outline of the piece. Might end up just keeping that as a, a straight line and having the other details around here kind of bring it up. So maybe bring this in a little bit more. Kind of almost got a horn coming back over. You can see if I were to turn that angle out, it would look funky. It's not maintaining that curl. So I'm gonna need at least a, a straight line you know, at that angle or kind of keep the curve following that line as well. And you can see that even this line is slightly different than that and it's, it's suggesting it goes down at a different angle. So maintain that same angle, keeps the structure somewhat similar. And I also liked how this edge was kind of coming in here, giving a somewhat of a triangle look. But I felt, you know, I need a third to kind of round it out so it doesn't look too even. So came down here, built this one up. Now I have, you know, three that look, kind of give a, a trifecta look amongst the same kind of style. So rule of thirds, you know, keep an odd number of things. We'll keep the layout a little bit more simplistic. And especially with letters that have such a defined structure, that'll let you keep the reader, you know, interested in the same manner. So it seems like I'm just building a lot below the letter, just adding a bunch of you know, cool details down there. So what I'm going to do is take this vertical line and maybe move it so it ends a little bit lower, have some of this information cross over it on top so that it actually brings the whole bulk of the letter down a touch. So once again, I want to go over some of the details here in my design choices. So first off, we've got that large vertical stem here. I kept the letter pretty straight on. You can see I did do a slight kind of curve to the left, and some of that is also resembled with, I guess, the curves of the B going slightly upright. So slight rotation to the whole letter, but you can see we've got a very big swoop coming around. And even so, you can see these lines in here kind of create a nice oval as well as the further outline almost creates a nice oval too. So that was keeping that structure in mind, keeping a, a nice flow on the top and then kind of rebounding off that had this little hit up in here so you could see kind of where that line was going. Gives the reader a little bit more details as well as you know more or less mostly just fills out this area along with kind of these hit ups here helps to guide the eye and fill in some of that big area. Without that you know you could do a lot with the fill to compensate for the wider section but ultimately I decided to go for just a black and white on this so needed to come up with a different way to go for it. Then coming back around we have the bottom of the B. Now, ton more detail in here, a lot of kind of junk thrown in there, whether it's these extra little hit ups to help throw the line around or kind of the splay out to also kind of fill in some bigger bodied section. So there's a few things here. Uh, the details here, there are a little bit you know tighter than uh, the full width of the regular part of the letter. So ideally maybe uh, cut in some of these, maybe get rid of some of that negative space, make those a little bit wider, would fill this letter out a little bit. I kind of like the kind of slight smaller detail details on the base, you know, gives a little bit more weight to this top section, kind of makes a smaller, kind of skinnier structure down here. 
And then ultimately, you know, these lines all swoop around and then slowly transition almost off to a curve. So you can see these top ones maintain that top curve and then as if you're kind of splaying out and now the stuff on the bottom slowly curves to the left and then even more curves down. So that kind of rounds out the letter nicely. Ultimately, this is a pretty uniform shape, so there's a few things I could do to change that up. I could, you know, throw these lines a little bit higher. I tried the top one out, didn't really like where that was going. Middle one out here would, you know, stretch that out, and really I would only do that if the piece totally required it, or if there was, you know, other letters over here. Right now, this was drawn pretty much to uh, stand alone, so not much reliance on other letters. Then also down here, you can see, you know, we're curving back out did a couple hit ups just to fill in a little bit extra area there and add a little bit more weight to that side. Um, small hit ups over here just add a little bit more depth, show you know a little bit more stack up section. I think that'll be cool with maybe some half toning if I just keep this black and white or not. Add some depth there. See the letter comes through the bottom here, but ultimately all together we're seeing that same B structure as the really first drawing. You know, nothing changing too, too much. You know, I said it did rotate it a little bit more, but ultimately it's keeping that same structure and I've really just gone around and added the same style of line and added that same flow in different variations and different cutouts. You can see added some straight letters here, so I pretty much just picked the edge of that circle that would normally hit around here picked some kind of average short straight lines for it instead and then kind of made a breakaway as if it, this was kind of in place of it in the curve so that adds a little bit ease of reading for the drawing but also adds a little bit of depth and some new characteristics to it so ultimately pretty happy with this B maybe I'll end up reusing it in a piece in the future but right now definitely have some uh, future tips to go for fully outlining this with a black marker so watch out for an updated video, uh, kind of a part two of this tutorial on some details on outlining the piece once you do have something that you're, you're pretty content and happy with. Altogether, big thanks for checking out the tutorial. I hope it helped you guys out. Um, be sure to kind of just translate these tips to other letters and other structures. More or less, just take that basic structure that we went over, something really simple as the full letter, and then just slowly add on to those details and add on little flares that maintain kind of that same flare flow because more or less if you keep that same structure any detail in here you can pretty much add and get away with a whole lot because Cree's pretty forgiving on the front of you know what works and what doesn't as far as you know extras and add-ons as long as you keep that structure to it and as long as you keep kind of that same momentum throughout the piece so Altogether, not too hard of a tutorial I would hope to follow. If you have any questions, always hit me in the comments section down below. I always, you know, feed through those and reply as needed. Or hit me up on Instagram, you know, send me a flick of what you're practicing with this and I can give you some critique or feedback alongside it. Want to check out some of the other videos I put together. I'll also link some of the other tutorials I've made. Some other ones recently I've detailed, kind of more shifting your letters around and changing their structure prior to getting into the full piece. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I just released those new hoodies and t-shirts. Real happy with those designs. Those are going to be killer for the holiday season. Hoodies are going to be perfect for the colder weather that's headed our way. So grab one of those if you want to show some support for the channel and show some love to all the other artists that were featured in that design. That's really going to do it for me, guys. Peace.